So today was going to be another founder story, but I had a problem. No matter where I looked, I couldn't find one. I asked if anyone in the office had an idea. Have you spoken about Ford already? When you do something different, something about the hero's journey? Well, we all know how well that went. Mm, right, okay. How about something about Patagonia? But all the ones that were suggested had already been done. I went back to the books, but still nothing. Then I found it, or it found me. It had been there all along. The story I found was about two brothers. No, not those two. We've already done them. These two would embark on a journey that would forever change the course of human history. And I had found a scale model kit of their now famous flying machine. But I can't build this model and tell this story without a change in mood. That's better. Orville and Wilbur Wright were born four years apart in the small town of Dayton, Ohio, nestled in the heart of the American Midwest. As young men, Orville and Wilbur set up a successful business repairing and building bicycles. It was here amidst the whirring of gears and the click-clack of spokes that their fascination with mechanics and engineering began. So I don't think I'm going to finish in time, so I'm going to need some help. But the brothers knew they wanted more. And then it happened. They heard about Otto and Octave. Both had built gliders that had allowed them to soar into the air. Tragically, in 1896, while flying his glider, Otto died. It was his death that was later cited by the Wright brothers as being the moment they would take flight research seriously. From that moment, the Wright brothers devoted themselves to the pursuit of flight. Through meticulous experimentation and countless setbacks, they honed their understanding of aerodynamics and propulsion, inching ever closer to their lofty goal. We're just having a break for lunch. I still don't think we're going to get this done in time. I think we're going to need more help. The Wright brothers were not alone in their pursuit to fly through the clouds. But while most of their peers favoured building a powerful engine to attach to an airframe, the brothers took inspiration from nature and believed that the challenge of flight couldn't be solved by brute force alone. The flying problem for them wasn't just about wings and engines, it was also about control. Just like birds who could bank and change direction, the brothers modelled their wings to aid in the control of their plane. In 1900, the brothers began testing their initial glider designs and were able to develop their understanding of their lift equations by building a contraption made out of a bicycle. They found their suspicion that the existing coefficients of drag and lift were in error was actually correct. And with these findings, the experiments continued when they built a wind tunnel to test dozens of miniature wings. It was this experimentation that led them to finally master three-axis control. On December 17, 1903, at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, Orville took the controls soaring into history, making the dawn of a new era in human achievement. But why Orville? Why not Wilbur? He was the oldest. Well, it all came down to the flip of a coin. Named the right flyer, the plane was built of spruce and muslin, with hand-carved propellers with a purpose-built gasoline engine which had been fabricated in their bicycle shop. Today, the legacy of Orville and Wilbur Wright lives on as a testament to the power of ingenuity, perseverance, and the unyielding human spirit. And within 66 years, we'll go from flight to the moon. I hope you enjoyed the fable today. Do give us a like and do consider subscribing. Thanks again and see you in the next one.